What's up everybody? Welcome to Knife Banter. Today we are talking about some of our favorite automatic knives. Like this one, or 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 this one, and this one. I, I ran out of knives. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I've got. Let's talk knives. What's up everybody? Welcome to Knife Banner. Today we have Jamie over here. How's it going, Kurt? What's up, man? I'm doing great. Dude, it's good to see you. Thanks. Hey, can you tell us what we're gonna be talking about today? Absolutely. I'm so excited because we get a little bit of your opinion on things. We get a little bit of my opinion on things and I think it'll be a fun time. So here's what we're doing. So we got some automatics on the table. We're talking about the best automatics in each price bracket. So the price brackets are $100, $200, $300 and the sky's the limit on the last one. So uh, we've got a over $2,000 knife here on the table that I'll show you guys in a second. But uh, yeah, so I think it'll be, it'll be fun to check out some of these automatic knives in the in these price categories. I have the first one on the table, can I just go? Yeah, do it, let's do it. All right, so the first one that I have is Kershaw Launch 9. And I think I brought out the Launch 9 just to kind of talk about the Launch series in general. So right. I think most of the Launch series, not all, um, thinking about you launch 13, but uh, most of the launch series is under $100 or rate really close to $100. And I think these are some of the best value for money in the automatic world that you can get. Uh, your choice is also really good. But on uh, most of the launches, you get this aluminum handle, you get a push button automatic and you get a CPM 154 blade. They're just great quality, great workmanship and everything. So this launch nine comes in at five inches. It's got a 1.8 inch blade, again, CPM 154, uh, steel and it comes in at 1.5 ounces and we don't give legal advice here but I hear this is California legal check Ooh. your lo local laws so that's my personal pick for what I think is probably some of the best automatics you can get under a hundred dollars and Kurt I think you disagree with me on that well Kershaw makes great automatics the launch series is amazing but if you want bang for your buck we got the Kalashnikov from Boker. Yeah. All right, guys, this one in particular is the Warhawk edition. Um, it's it's a great little knife. It's three and a half inches on the blade. Uh, Oz 8 steel, it's got the plunge lock, automatic. Dude, it's a Kalashnikov. I know, that's thing, that thing's been around for forever. And yeah, like the bang for the buck, around 40, like there's, there's, there's a price difference between kind of the low end and the high end, but. Yeah, what, 40-ish bucks? Yeah, forty-seven ninety-five for this guy. But there's not just the, I picked this one because I think it's a cool design. Yeah. But there's like one million different flavors and colors. Yeah, so under a hundred bucks, Boker Kalashnikov, guys. That's one of the best automatics. And these things are workhorses. They will just go and go and go and go. Uh, we actually have a video on some of the Kalashnikovs and some of the crazy stories behind those. If you haven't checked that out, check that out. Uh, you can get this one in particular for $47.95 on the website. So that is the one you would recommend if somebody's like, Kurt, I need an automatic knife under $100. Kalashnikov, no question for you. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, if they're not, if they're not looking to spend too much, Kalashnikov. Love it, love it. Okay, so next price bracket, $200. And I feel like, well, we're getting kind of in the middle of that $100 and $200 with my next pick. But under $200, I don't think you can, me personally, I don't think you can go wrong with a TR3. And that's what I have on the table right now is a Protect TR3. You can get a TR3 that is much, much more expensive than this one, which is $154.95. But this is kind of what you will get in that base model TR3 right. configuration. Uh, so this one, you just got the aluminum handles, push button automatic. Um, uh, this one's got a great coating on the blade. But you just kind of get that basic like 154 blade, aluminum handle, nothing crazy going on, just like plain colors, that type of thing for kind of that 150-ish dollar range. This one particular comes in at eight inches overall, 154 CM blade, so it's not CPM 154 like the launch is, uh, but it's you know similar composition or basically the same composition, just not powdered. 
And then of course you got the aluminum handles, comes in at 3.72 ounces. This one does not come with a deep carry pocket clip. Um, I know there's some other Protex out there that have that nice flush deep carry pocket clip. Mm. Uh, this one does not, but that's you know mm -hmm. kind of what you get in that base model configuration, right? Yeah. So I really, really like Protex. I think they're some of the best automatics that money can buy, uh, just especially the base model ones. They're just, the materials aren't super premium, but just the quality and workmanship and tolerances that you get out of a Protex I think are top notch. So if you're looking for a knife under 200 bucks, I think a Protex will do it for you. You know, I honestly love the TR3. Uh, TR, what is that? Tactical, uh, tactical response. response yep. Right? Yeah, man, the TR3, the TR5, I like those. Protec makes an awesome automatic. They, oh, they jump. They're, they have great tolerances, just like you said, man. That's a good pick. I'm actually a little jealous of your pick that I over got, mine. I, I, I chose it first, man. I know. You got to get in there fast. I know. <laughs> All right, guys. Up next, I have the Hogue Knives A01 Micro Switch. Now, this is actually a pretty cool little blade. It's CPM 154, it's got aluminum scales, it's got the reverse not deep pocket clip. It has the lock, so you can lock the blade out or you can lock it shut, which is pretty cool. Hogue makes a good knife. Yeah, I think, so you get that real good, just American made quality in this price point. So Protec obviously being no exception to that and Hogue being no exception to that as well. I think that and the Deca I think are my two favorite Hogue knives. I love that little thing. It's just a quality piece of knife. It really is. And the aluminum scales make it pretty light. Um, it's not a big print in your pocket. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, one thing that I've noticed is there's either automatics that slam open or there's automatics that just open normally, you know? I prefer a hard hitting uh, automatic knife, but this Hogue, it, it hits hard, but it's so light yeah. that it's not overwhelming, you know what I mean? There's not a lot of mass forward on that blade, so it's just kind of a, a light set into there. Exactly. See, I don't really, we, we've talked about this multiple times over probably the past couple of weeks, but like, I know you really like just as strong a string as possible, right? I don't really care that much as long as it opens with some sort of authority and it opens reliably every single time. I'm not right. a huge snob on like, how fast does it open or like how hard does it hit at the end? Well, before this, we, before we started filming, I had a highlighter. Actually, I still have a highlighter. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> now, I'm not going to use this one. I am going to use, use the, the next knife. Oh, okay. You can do that one too. Watch this. Sneak peek. Pow! That just happened. That's a weapon right there. Now, that's a hard hitter. All right, guys. Back to the micro switch, though. This is a great knife. Aluminum scales, like I said. It's got this interesting GFN backspacer. Uh, it's a great knife and it is under in between the one to $200 range right at $152. And there are a ton of different versions of that. They also have the sub two inch versions with the bottle opener right. at the back, yeah. which I think is really cool. Yeah, they're they, cool. I mean, you basically have the same handle, right? But they're like, hey, we don't have any blade to cover here. So let's put some utility in the back of this handle. So they put a bottle opener on it, yeah. which is super dope. Yeah, that one's a cool model. You know what? Hmm. Wouldn't it be kind of fun if you just had a button that you could just set and have it just automatically do whatever you want? Don't you think that'd be cool? Yeah. Yeah.
Huh. I don't know, Jamie. Maybe that's not the best idea. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. Should we move on? Yeah. All right, I have the next knife on the table. Well, actually, before I get to the next knife, the next price category is what we're talking about. So, sub $300. Ooh. Are you excited? I'm stoked, actually. I'm super stoked. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. So this is the Microtech LUDT, which was my personal pick for the best automatic knife that you can get or that you would recommend somebody under $300. I feel like this is kind of a gold standard in that price range. Like the LUDT has been around for a long time. It's a Microtech, it's top quality. Like I got nothing but good things to say about it. So this particular one is eight inches overall, comes in at a 3.375 inch blade. When I get to the steel, the steel's interesting when it comes to Microtechs because Microtech has a tendency to just give you whatever they feel like on any given day. I, but, feel, I feel like they're like, well, we have this steel available. <laughs> But a thing to note about that is you'll always be getting a premium. It's not like they're going to put, you know, 440 on there right. on your LGT. Right. So, for instance, the paper says LMAX, premium steel. Uh, the blade stamp on here says M390. So you're going to get something like that. Sometimes you'll get 204P. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, they kind of had a tendency to kind of throw whatever they feel like in there. But it's always going to be premium. Mm -hmm. This particular one is 249.25, and I think currently we're out of stock of this particular LUDT, but we have a few other ones on the site as well. So snap those up while you can. These just go in and out real quickly. So we do our best to try and show them to you when they come in, but uh, you know, fingers crossed. That is the LUDT. Like, I don't know, it's just like your straight aluminum handle construction, push button automatic. It's got a great strong spring in there. The blade configuration is a little interesting. The edge kind of sits up a little bit, or I guess the spine sits up a little bit higher than the, than the back of the blade. So you get kind of this cool thumb ramp on it. You get uh, a custom screw on the pivot there and then custom screws here. So some people don't like that. They look kind of cool, Yeah. but uh, it just kind of depends on what your preferences are. And then there's no choils or anything down here. It's just, you kind of got a, just a solid groove for your fingers and then you get a lanyard here and just a standard, Three hole pattern pocket clip. What does LUDT stand for? I think it's Large Underwater Demolition Team. Right. So yeah, yeah. I knew it was something demolition team. It's it's printed right here on the blade. So. Oh. <laughs> so if you if you watch the B roll, there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's the LUDT. Um, I like this knife. I've never carried one, but right. we, there was a guy here, Andrew, a while back. Like this is his favorite side opening automatic. Um, and right. I got to play around with his a bunch, so yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's a basic workhorse from Microtech. Yeah. And, and especially a side opener from Microtech, but it's it slaps. Yep, so I mean, Microtechs, they make good stuff. This is no exception. Heck yeah. All right, guys, I've got the next one up and it is the Benchmade 9400. This is the one that took the marker out. Pow! You almost took me out with the it marker. It has a crack in it. All right, guys, this thing is so cool. You guys know the Osborne 940. It's been around forever, really. And uh, it's a great classic design from Benchmade. This one in particular has S30V steel, the aluminum uh, scales there with the purple backspacer, just like the manual thumb stud Such version. Such a classic design. Right, exactly. But, holy cow, this thing jumps, I'm man. We're talking about snappy autos and that's your thing, right? I, so honestly, there you go. I think I would put this up against, maybe the TR3 might hit harder, but this thing is powerful. Mm. And like you said, I like a really snappy auto. I like that. This one right here, it's got the lock in the back, the safety lock. It's got the uh, button plunge uh, lock and act or actuating button. There you go. There we go. Uh, yeah, I personally would try to find a deep carry pocket clip for this this knife. Yeah, well, you know what the good thing about that is though is they're pretty easy to come by. They really are, and and honestly, if you can just send them an email, usually they're pretty cool about it. But man, nine. Four zero zero. Yeah, so if you like that classic, you know, what's been around 20, 25 years? I think 20? 20, 20, 20 something. It's gotta be pretty close to 20. Uh, if you like that design, but you know, want some spring in your step. 
Holy cow, some spring in your step. That's a new option for you. This is the kind of knife that you hand to someone who's never used an automatic and you tell them, Hold hang, on. hang on to it. Hold on tight. Really, really get a good grip. Yeah, cool. this thing's sweet, man. Uh, How much is that one? USA made. Oh, this one is $238 on the website. So just under the LUDT then, huh? Just under the you LUDT. You seem to be picking knives that are like right in the middle of, kinda, yeah. of the price range. It kind of seems like that, huh? There yeah. are more expensive LUDTs, but this particular one is about right in the middle there. So Right. Yeah, so the 9400. 9, I always want to just call it the 940. It's the 94 <sighs> yeah. A, the 94 Auto. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's the same exact design, just with a button instead of the thumb stud, so. Right. Love it's it. a cool knife, guys. That, that's a snappy auto. Okay. This is the kind of the category that I'm excited for, because you just get <laughs> yeah. to sh show, like, the tippy top of, of automatics. So, this next category is no holds bar, like, 300 and above. Like, whatever you wanted, whatever you thought was cool throw it in there. So I, of course, chose a Protec because high-end Protecs are beautiful. Yeah, they are. So I have this in the box. I actually probably should have had gloves on, but oh well. Um, should we open this thing? Yes. Are you guys excited? It always looks like a little mini casket, though. <laughs> the <wood>. Like, <laughs> this is where your dead knife lives. Yeah, you're going to carry it. There we go. All right, here we go. We're going to open this up. So it's a it's a Walter Brand design. If that Ooh. tells you anything, and we'll pull this out here, and we'll set this off to the side, and we'll very gently click the button to open this thing. Oh, this is a Brand Three. Holy cow! Look at that polish. But not just any Brand Three. This is like a high end, like yeah, just crazy Brand Three. So. This particular one goes for $2,395. Hi, caramba. But you're getting, I mean, at this point, you're just getting an art knife, essentially. So you have some interesting touches on here. My favorite thing is this button. So it's this kind of like mosaic metal brass button that they got going on there. That's cool. Which is super cool. The polish on this knife is, this knife is actually ground and polished by Walter Brend himself. So That's you, get, cool. you kind of get that aspect of it as well. And then you get this ironwood insert, so you get some exotic wood in there, and then it's just kind of this stainless steel body or whatever, and then you get a milled, milled deep carry pocket clip. But, I mean, these high-end Protex are just something special. You get right. just crazy, like, artisanship, essentially. So you've got people like Walter Brand actually touching this particular knife. He's the designer, but he's also actually doing work on this knife which is which is pretty cool so there's only a few of these in existence uh we have uh, a couple here maybe one maybe one or two um so if you want this one like once it's gone it's gone so yeah <laughs> keep that in mind it is 20 <laughs> almost 2400 dollars. so that's the the custom brand three i guess so if if you're in the market for this type of knife, I'm sure you already know everything about it anyway. So I'll uh, I'll leave it at that. But that's that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, that's what I chose for the kind of Grail custom no holds bar category. It blows my mind because we get in these customs just every once in a while, but it seems like we have one for a little bit, and then all of a sudden we get a new one, and that other one's gone. So. Check the website. We always have a bunch of different cool customs on the site. Yeah, that one is epic. I think we got like four, four-ish, like above thousand-dollar Protex, and they're all just like crazy art knives. They're pretty That's cool. cool. Yeah, I'm gonna put it back in the box now. <laughs> it, it's coffin. Yeah, you gotta put it back in. It's and I put that back there. <clears throat> all right. While you do that, I'm gonna grab my last knife. It is a Microtech Signature Series Troodon. This is sweet. Dagger blade with Damascus steel. Um, I mean, really, it's it's kind of a. It feels not as special as. The Protec. But it, I mean, it's not that exp as, not that, not as expensive. Right, right. <laughs> right. This one is $712 on the website. Aluminum scales, deep carry pocket clip, glass breaker. You guys know the deal with these. They're cool. But that blade though. But this blade. That's where it's at. Man, the detail in that Damascus is crazy. 
Yeah, it's kind of this like black wash Damascus, which is super. I'm not sure if that sheet actually says what type of Damascus is. A lot of times it, it doesn't, but yeah, like that is some that was some high quality, beautiful stuff. And I think right. that is what you're paying for. Well, and I, I wonder if people are like, that's not an automatic, that's an OTF. Well, an OTF is an automatic opening knife. Yes, an OTF is an automatic, but not necessarily the other way around. <laughs> yes. Something that. like that. <laughs> anyway, guys, we have some cool knives here. These are great automatics. These are just a few of the automatics we have. So make sure you guys jump on the website, check out these cool automatics, and yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I think that was cool. I, it was fun to see your picks in this category, and like, if somebody was just to walk up to you and be like, hey, I need an automatic under $200, like, what would Kurt pick? Or what would Jamie pick? And not necessarily like, well, what sells the best on the website or anything right. like that. It's kind of like, oh, what is your personal preference in this field? Yeah. So that I think was the interesting, uh, point behind this video. Okay, besides the expensive ones, which one would you take home? Um, I already have a TR3. Jealous. So we're good there. So the LUDT for sure. I think I'm going to have to go with the TR3. The TR3? <clears throat> yep. It's hard to go wrong with a TR3. It's been around for a while. It's a classic. It's just a good just, it's nothing flashy, but it's right. just a good, solid, usable knife. I agree. And if I was looking for a more premium steel, I would go with the 9400, obviously. Yeah, the so. 9400 is so good. Like, it hasn't been out for that long, but right. like, I think it's one of the best automatics. That and the Mediator, uh, the best automatics that uh, Benchmade has. Yeah, man. Heck range. yeah. So, Well, we did it. We did it, man. I'm super pumped to just kind of be here talking nice with you. Heck yeah, man. Now, Guys, Jamie has something he wants to say, and I think we should just jump right into it and cut to the chase because I don't want to have to cry. All right, so as with all good things in life, everything eventually has to come to an end. So as uh, the day you guys are watching this, Friday, uh, this is actually my last day here at Blade HQ. It's been a wild, crazy, gratifying ride over the past four and a half years, and uh, all you people that have been watching over that time, uh, thank you so much for being here. But I'm kind of off to pursue some new adventures elsewhere. I'll still be kind of around the Salt Lake area. Um, but yeah, uh, leaving Blade HQ, and it's kind of a very bittersweet moment. Dude, you're going to be missed big time. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to miss it here. Uh, I will owe a lot of my professional experience and a lot of my friends here in Utah to working here at Blade HQ. So uh, that's the unfortunate news, guys. Um, obviously, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. And to all you guys have been watching over the years, um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you.